Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Lincoln at the brand new, and I mean brand new, Lincoln Heritage Museum on the campus of Lincoln College. It's been four years in the planning, and it's finally ready to open up. And I'll tell you, I feel like I'm at Ford's Theater here tonight. And interestingly, this is where the tour begins at the Lincoln Heritage Museum. Ron Keller, you've been at this for a long time. You were the yes. director of the old museum, mm -hmm. you're the director of the new museum. You, had all, you were all about planning this. Mm -hmm. And you made a conscious decision to start this tour for people on the last day of Lincoln's life. You're right. We worked with Taylor Studios out of Rantoul, and, and I have to give them a lot of credit for their creative approach. But we had to do something very, very different in this museum because Lincoln's story is told elsewhere. And to get into Lincoln and to get into his life, we had to get a different sort of approach. And mm -hmm. I think we got this here with this type of Ford Theater approach. We, we kind of work backwards. And when we see, we're going to, the first thing you do is you see a video here which explains that after Lincoln was shot, he may, may very well have had a life review Correct. where your life flashes before your eyes, Correct. which gives you the hook of being able to tell his life story. Correct. Yeah, and it's di very different because what we do here is we don't say everything you hear or see is exactly what Lincoln said or heard or said in his lifetime or in his memories. But we do take no liberties when it comes to the words because the words are all taken from transcripts of things Lincoln said himself or from things that Lincoln heard or people mm -hmm. said about him. Uh, and they're all pictures that uh, were taken in his lifetime with a few other pictures as well, room recreations that he may have seen in his lifetime. Yeah. So we have every reason to believe that this in many ways could have been, if he experienced a life review, this would have been very much like it. We, we hear voices now coming out, and it, these are the actors inside Ford's Theater. Yes. Mr. and Mrs. Lincoln are late to the theater. Correct. So the play's gone on without them. Correct. Okay, so when you get to Ford's Theater, you hear the play going on. And interestingly, just over your right shoulder over here is this wonderful old photograph of Ford's Theater. Probably, this is probably the day after Lincoln was, was yes. shot. You yes. still have armed guards there. Yes, it was. Uh, and I'm going to ask you to go ahead and get ready with that. We're going to push okay. a button so that we can get ready for our first scene. And from that on, what we see here is a schedule of Lincoln's Day mm -hmm. on April 14th. Yes, absolutely, because what we want, to want the visitor to do is to step into his world, step into his life, step into the night that he was assassinated. Mm -hmm. So as you said, pointing out everything from what Ford's Theater looked like to the actors and the play going on to Mary and uh, Abraham Lincoln being late for the show, it gets the visitor into April 14th, 1865. Right, and of course then there's the playbill here. Uh, Ford's Theater uh, established 1861. So this this was a new, a fairly new theater at the yeah. time. Yes, it was. He's going to see our American cousin on Friday, April 14th, and it looks like uh, it's about 18 seconds until the show starts. Correct. Right? Correct. Okay. So we have a very timed approach because we don't want to file visitors in uh, through here all at once. So it's a time so people know when the next show starts. Yeah. Uh, but it also gives it the effect of you are ready to enter a show. That's right. Okay. So you would enter, and. This way, after yes. you, sir. Well, thank you very much. Welcome to Ford's Theater on the evening of April 14th, 1865. Just beyond this wall, President Lincoln and his wife Mary are enjoying the comedic play our American cousin, from a private box they're sharing with our guests, Major Henry Rathbone and his fiancee, Clara Harris. The Lincolns arrived a little late for tonight's production, but the president has been laughing heartily and seems to be in a fine mood. What will Miss Harris think of my hanging on to you so? She won't think anything about it. exactly the way she wants them, with nothing in it. Stop 
This single gunshot would change the course of American history. A bullet fired from the gun of John Wilkes Booth penetrated Abraham Lincoln's skull around 10.15 in the evening. The president clung to life for the next nine hours before he was pronounced dead at 7.22 the next morning. In those nine hours, President Lincoln occupied the space between life and death. In this space, he could have experienced a life review. During a life review, an individual can often recall much or some of the episodes of his life. Life reviews have been known to reveal why someone is the way he is, the motives behind certain acts, how actions impact others, and how someone might have made better choices. This history may include vivid, colorful, and detailed memories once forgotten. You are now invited to witness Lincoln's life review along with him. As you proceed, reach out and touch the vivid, lit up, colorful objects that occupy Lincoln's memories. In doing so, you further unlock voices and images of President Lincoln's past that make up his life review. Okay, Ron, let's, let's follow Mr. Lincoln through some of the phases of his life. Sure, huh? right. Because this is really, come, it comes out of the, the film where, of course, he has, he's passed away and his spirit has, has moved back through to, to examine his life and how he got where he was. Right. And, of course, as with him, as, as with all of us, starts with, with the mother. That's correct. And after the Ford Theater experience, we do go into the more traditional look at Lincoln through his life. But what we have upstairs here in this design is an opportunity for people to connect with history through touching objects. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's a really unique thing because the reality is that the most museums, there's a barrier. You don't touch things. In this museum, mm -hmm. we invite people to literally touch history. And in the fully immersive audio video tour, if you touch these items, for instance, this quilt, which by the way, did you touch this quilt, Mark? No, let me. It's actually, it's a real quilt, but it's it's like a resin. Yeah. It's, it's hardened. Oh, I see what they've done. They, yeah. That way it'll never wear out. Correct. Okay. Absolutely. And because no matter how many touches it gets, you it Correct. Okay. Because we it's expect frayed. thousands and thousands of people will go through, uh -huh. and it does have to last. Yeah. But once this is touched, then we hear uh, the story of Nancy Lincoln, mm -hmm. Lincoln's mother, and, and how she, uh, she was important in Lincoln's life sure. in the early years. And we also then hear about Thomas Lincoln. And so we, the, the quilt then is a touch point. It's in many ways a connection to history. And so what these objects do then is they connect individually with a story in Lincoln's life. Right. And almost every object in here, let me just move this way a little bit. This weed, for instance, if you touch this picture frame, mm -hmm. a, a voice will come up and describe to you why the weed was important. Correct. In fact, his mother died from poisoning from such a thing, right? You're correct, Mark. Uh, the snake root, which was milk sick, milk poisoning, very common way to die mm -hmm. in this particular time in the frontier area. We do. We hear about Lincoln's aunt and uncle and his mother dying. And Lincoln actually talks in a biography about the death. So we actually hear Lincoln's voice through actors who portray these people. Okay. What if I were to, is that tree, does that activate anything? The if tree, I touch the tree? You know what? The tree doesn't activate anything, but go ahead, Mark. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, but, Feels well, like what's, a tree. What's interesting about the tree, though, is that Taylor Studios took a tree from somewhere in central Illinois, mm -hmm. and I don't know how they did it, but they actually made a mold of the entire tree. So this is a taken from a real tree in central okay, Illinois. Okay, so that bark is, is the exact same bark um, shape and size as, as, as uh, what you might expect in southern Illinois. Uh, absolutely, I guess. So. yes. Sarah Bush Lincoln, this was yes. his uh, his stepmom, I yes, guess. Yes, it was, yes. Thomas, his father. Yes. And, it, and again, if you touch any of these objects, this, this plow, for instance, down here, mm -hmm. you would get a narrative yes. uh, in someone's voice about about how this played into Lincoln's life. Yes, we hear about the differences wow. of, of uh, between Lincoln and his father, about how his father was a man of the land mm -hmm. and how Lincoln begged for something more. And so we hear the uh -huh. difference of Thomas Lincoln and Abraham Lincoln in personality and, and, and views on life mm -hmm. through, yes, through the acts and all these things, the book, and how Lincoln mm -hmm. became a, a man who wanted education. And again, we use Lincoln's words here and how he wanted education, which mm -hmm. is a good segue to the next stage of his life because Lincoln now is advancing his own life forward. Right. Okay, so the young man and of course learning how to study at that point. Correct. And then we get into another phase here, and this yeah. looks like a sort of like a, a, a cabin. It does, it does. This would have been the cabin I guess he was right. born in. And this is actually what this is, is, is a cabin, but it represents a cabin on a flat boat. 
because what we see oh. here, what we see here is Lincoln is going now traveling, and he has his first. And he actually, we hear uh, the story about how Lincoln earns his first dollar. And Lincoln himself says, "You want to hear how I earned my first dollar?" Mm -hmm. And it's actually a story he later told to William Herndon about his experience going down to New Orleans on the flatboat. Okay, and the flatboat, for instance. Okay, here's the picture of the flatboat. Correct. And people in Central Illinois will know this story because. The flatboat got stuck at New Salem. Yes, right, and that's where he got his, his first real job when he came back from New Orleans. Correct, okay. correct. Yes, and it's cool. The map is map's wonderful up here. Decatur, there's a, a lit up spot yes. on Decatur, mm -hmm. and he at, at the age of old oh, when he was 18 or 19, that's where he lived, and then that's where he got that job and that's took correct. him down the Sangamon Road. You're correct, huh. and actually through the audio video tour, we see a progression of lights from there to there to there. Up there. Oh, okay. And so again, we, just to, for our audience sake, we would be hearing audio right now, yes. except for our technical mm -hmm. uh, difficulties. We mm -hmm. can't do everything at once. Mm -hmm. But this is just to give them a flavor of what they you, might experience you as you they go through. And this is actually a tour that we still offer for people who want to go through and don't have time to do the full immersive tour. They can right. walk through it, but they still get connected with history. And if you do the submersive tour where you touch everything and listen to all this, you're looking at an hour to an hour and a half. Or right? an hour and 15 minutes for that's the full terrific. tour. Yeah, oh, that's terrific. It is. And it, does, it goes quicker than a lot of person might imagine. But even with this tour, uh, we imagine that there's a volunteer or a, myself or Ann would be guiding people through. Mm -hmm. And if in replacing the audio video, they'll be saying, now imagine you're on a flatboat. And this is the flatboat that took Lincoln down. So we can still get the effect for the visitor yeah. that the audio video would have. Yeah. And of course, the, the terminus of his trip was New Orleans, mm -hmm. and that's uh, that's the map of the city right there, I guess. Yes, that's the map of the city, correct. And Lincoln himself, we hear Lincoln say, uh, the, the world seemed wider and fairer before me because it was actually the largest city by far he'd ever seen oh, in yeah, his life. Yeah. And so it opened up for him the possibilities of what the world might bring. And so in many ways, we see another transition in his life from uh, you know the early years now to the world becoming mm -hmm. wider and fairer before him and the mm -hmm. opportunities he sees that for himself. Yeah, okay, and so maybe all of this studying he's been doing is about to pay off. He's broadening Correct. his horizons a little bit. Correct. Okay, now this is interesting. Okay, now he, we've, he's gone from, from New Orleans, he's come back to New Salem, mm -hmm. and it's interesting because what you have here is an immense pocket watch. Yes, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, and what we love And here, I can hear it ticking in the background. Yes, you hear the ticking in the background. And that's, actually, the person wouldn't hear the ticking until they get to this particular point. So mm -hmm. they, they can hopefully put the ticking in the clock and, this, and the watch together. But the reality is these are also touch points, Mark. And what happens here is if a visitor touches 1831 uh -huh. in the audio video tour, this watch face actually becomes a video of what happened in 1831 oh, as Lincoln came to New Salem. Yeah. And so once again, inviting the visitor to be interactive with it. 1832, you know, has another, another episode. Another episode, up, huh? and same thing for 1833 and okay. 1834. And, and these, were, these are videos of real actors and actresses living history. Huh? This particular one is actually taken from still shots, but it's really cool how Taylor Studios did it because they merged a lot of, uh, of, of moving of the pictures. So you almost mm -hmm. look like you're moving with the picture. It, it's a way really to bring the visitor into oh, wow. it. And now we enter his his law career. Oh, okay, all right. Well, you know, I kind of feel like Lincoln probably didn't think his life really started until he was able to practice law. Correct. Is that uh, fair? I think that's fair. Uh, the reality is, is I think Lincoln realized his purpose in life uh, through his law career because it was a law career, and it was through uh, books that he read, mm -hmm. uh, and it's through the people that he met and his law partners, uh, including Stewart, John Stewart here, who introduced him to law. Mm -hmm. And that is where Lincoln indeed got his start. Because in many ways, you know, Lincoln became a president who uh, was a lawyer, but there are many, many presidents who've been lawyers. Lincoln yeah. was the only law, uh, president who was, who was a lawyer first in many ways. Because, and I mean that in the sense that he really believed his law career shaped who he was and shaped his politics. Right. And again, you'd hear that if you came in here and touched the book or, yes. or touched the picture of Logan, mm -hmm. you would hear those stories about Correct. his Correct. take on it. Yes. Hey, Ron, we were talking about his legal career, and of course, he spent a good amount of time in a courtroom, didn't he? Yes, he did. Uh, he spent over 20 years practicing law yeah. in different courthouses in central Illinois on the 8th Judicial Circuit. Yeah, and we hear all the time about about all the traveling he did. Yes, And it, it yes. turned out he made a pretty darn good living as an attorney, too. He did, did. he did. And Judge David Davis said, and actually it's one of the audio you hear in here, is that Lincoln was happy on the circuit, as happy as he could be and happy nowhere else. Yeah. And so he truly did enjoy this time on the circuit through all kinds of inclement weather. How anyone would enjoy that on horseback, <laughs> I have no idea, I but either. he did enjoy it. Yeah. Um, in front of us here, we see these kind of odd 
uh, sundry objects on the table. Again, touch points. These are all touch so, points. So when, when, when people come in and say this milk here, they touch yes. this plate of milk, that describes a, a famous case that he had argued somewhere yeah, in the circuit. It, it right? does. It's a milk drinking mule milk. case. <laughs> milk drinking uh, mule. Uh, in Lincoln, Illinois. And it's one of the more interesting touch points we have in the entire museum because people will automatically want to go up to it and, and touch it. And it was a, most Lincoln cases were just regular civil suits between who owned this and who owned that. And they're yeah. mundane everyday cases, but that's what paid the bills for Lincoln. That's right, that's right. And moving on here, of course, he wasn't working all the time. A lot of this room is devoted to family, life, uh, just, just life, mo a lot of it in Springfield. Uh, but again, Mary, ever present in everything, uh, positive and yes, negative, yes, you know. Yeah, correct. Um, but correct. Uh, things that they would have had in their home, and correct. and again, touch points. If you if you walk up and touch some of the furniture, some of the picture frames. Correct. And and, you know, and even if they're not touch points, we invite people to touch the lamps, touch the pictures, touch the tables. Mm -hmm. And we do hear about the personal side of Lincoln because the reality is, is this is who he was. He had a human side. He had. Friends, you know, he had a, a stormy relationship before Mary, and he had a stormy relationship when he was engaged to Mary. Yeah, and we're very fair to to him. We hear about mm -hmm. the children as well in this particular area. Yeah, pictures of his kids. Um, unfortunately, Eddie was the one son they lost. Nobody ever Correct. had a photograph There's of no Eddie. Photograph. I guess he was too old. Correct. Yes. Um, yeah. But the others, uh, such uh, untimely uh, deaths for, for a couple of them. But we hear about their personalities because they mm -hmm. all had distinct personalities. Tad and Willie. Uh, were very lively, and we hear about how they were different. Again, these are all accounts taken from people who knew Lincoln and knew the Lincoln family. Yeah, the boys, the four boys, they all had very different personalities. They totally did. Yeah. And Robert was the more studious one, and we hear about him going to Harvard and how he never had but 10 minutes with Lincoln quiet time. We heard Tad and Willie are the lively ones, the rambunctious ones, yeah. uh, and um, but but how they were all very, very dear to Lincoln. Yeah, yeah. He had his hands full with him. Now he, and he had a lot of patience as a father, didn't yes, he? Yes, he did. He had to. And he was a very doting father, very kind and loving, uh, mm -hmm. and probably not the most disciplinarian. I think a lot of parents today would probably say, well, that's probably not the way we should discipline kids. Yeah. The political Lincoln. The political Lincoln. Okay, in the 1850s, actually in the 1840s, he became a congressman, mm -hmm. and then he went back on the circuit. But then in the 1850s, politics became very big in his life. He did. In 1854, the kansas Nebraska Act aroused him like he'd never been before. That was a quote we have in the museum. And so what we hear uh, at Mark is a lot about the political career of Lincoln and how he comes alive. And we have the touch point here is the House Divided. And uh -huh. uh, this is actual touch point. And, and so you hear about the House Divided speech. And the speech comes up here when you touch yeah, that. Yeah, you okay. hear it and then the audio comes and you uh -huh. hear about it. And then how he challenged Douglas to debates. And this is a touch point, and mm -hmm. then we hear uh, an exchange between Douglas and Lincoln. I love this because there's a lot of booing and there's a lot of clapping in the mm -hmm. background. So you almost you're almost there hearing this exchange between these two big giants of the era. The, 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 that what I've read says that you know that used to be that old Lincoln would talk for two hours and then Douglas would talk for two hours and then they'd get a rebuttal period. Yes, it's yes. not like it is. It's now. not like it is no. today. The attention span had to be a lot more back then. But I think they were much more into politics. And I think these two were very, very engaging. Douglas was a household name. He was the most popular oh, senator yeah. in the country. Lincoln was this upstart politician. But man, you can't, you don't underestimate Lincoln. So I think the two of them together on the stage was very magnetic. Yeah, I would like to hear those voices together. Yes. In my well, well, you have to come back and you'll I hear will, it, Mark. I am. I'm going to yes. come back. And the political Lincoln, I mean, this is all about all about running for, for president. I yes. mean, yeah. here, for instance, oh, his, his photographer, Matthew Brady, he yeah. kept this guy busy, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Um, he made Matthew Brady famous. Matthew Brady was also already a well-known photographer in New York City. We mm -hmm. have our oversized camera representing, in many ways, how much this picture was not just a picture. It was a photograph which made Lincoln president. Mm -hmm. and, and Lincoln himself, we hear the story about how... Uh, Matthew Brady's picture made Lincoln present because his picture was disseminated all across the country and Lincoln could actually see what a presidential candidate looked like like no other presidential candidate That's before. That's right. He had a lot of advantages that nobody had before him. Photography is one. Yes. The telegraph. The telegraph another was another one. You betcha. And he took full use of these things. That's mm -hmm. what I appreciate is that if, if Lincoln would around today, oh, he'd be tweeting. Uh, uh, <laughs> he would be every second. He'd have a lot of followers, he would wouldn't be. he? He would be. We hear the rail. Touching the rail. We hear about the rail. You know, the rail in. splitter. Let me, let's take a look at that. This, if you touch this rail, 
actually the story about how that became a symbol for his candidacy Co comes up. Huh? Correct, um, because these rails were brought in in the 1860 uh, convention in Decatur uh -huh. when they nominated him for president, and Lincoln had apparently split these rails 30 years before, and so he was supposed to inspect them to say, did you split these rails? And uh -huh. he, he allegedly says, I don't know if I split these, I could have done a much better job. <laughs> but they were cut up and they were used as souvenirs yeah. for his campaign. Yeah. So we hear about the other people that were very much responsible, Judge David Davis, Leonard Sweat, the people that he met on the law circuit, once again, are the people who get him president mm -hmm. in 1860. Mm -hmm. Very, very important. Mm -hmm. This is interesting too. We think we have a, 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 an activist and mean press now. When you look at some of the stuff that was said about Lincoln yeah. at the time, uh, it's, it's almost, well, it's almost embarrassing. This, this one from, uh, this is from several Democratic newspapers right here in 1860. He is semi-literate, ignorant, uncultured buffoon, homely and awkward. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't say that about anybody now, even if it was true. Correct, you're right. And I think that there'd be intense criticism if somebody said that. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, 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 we try to reach an age of civility today, whether we do it or not, but you're right. Lincoln, th and this is the sort of thing Lincoln is, is experiencing when he's becoming president. As you know, Mark, that if a president ever has a honeymoon period where people love him, it's right when he's elected because right. he's not, he's, you know, let's give him the man a chance. Not anything wrong yet. Yeah, yeah. And, and here they didn't even give him a chance. Yeah. So you can automatically see why this man was reviled and criticized from the very beginning. Yeah. Um, he's, you know, he, the, he was not even all that popular in his own county. Correct. You know, he, he, he didn't carry Sangamon County. He didn't County, carry did Sangamon he? County, correct. Yeah. Uh, and, and he didn't county, carry many counties in Illinois. Mm -hmm. And the reality was is that, um, even New Jersey didn't go for Lincoln twice, and it was a northern state. Mm -hmm. And so the fact is, is that Lincoln had to work his way, and only really late in his presidency did people really realize that this man was somebody that they were lucky to have mm -hmm. in the office. Mm -hmm. Pretty soon, though, he's elected, yes. and he's going out to um, out to the White House, mm -hmm. and it's a long train trip. Now, mm -hmm. when you walk into this room, you hit a sensor, mm -hmm. and the rain starts to fall. Yes. The umbrellas start to get splashed with yes. rain, and you hear the rain, and Lincoln's farewell speech comes yes. up. It is a very emotional, moving speech. Oh, uh, and, and Lincoln, it, the, the, uh, the voice that does Lincoln here is very, very solemn. Uh, you know, uh, I've lived my life here, and who knows if I shall ever return mm -hmm. again. And it's a very touching farewell to Springfield, but also to Illinois. Because this museum in many ways is, is different in our approach, obviously, but we're also very different because we really focus on the Illinois years and how formative that was to get Lincoln elected. Mm -hmm. And Lincoln, I think, realized that in 1860, how much this state and these people had meant to him. Yeah, yeah. Well, it wasn't long before he was in the White House, and I love your personal history about this. You got a chance to visit the White House, went into the Lincoln bedroom, which was his office at the time. Correct. And you had a you had a real personal awakening and a, a feeling for Lincoln at that point, didn't uh, you? I did, I did. I'm, I'm lucky I didn't salivate all over the floor <laughs> of the office. But it, it truly is. This is the place where Lincoln spent uh, most of his time and toiled in this office till late at night, an hour. I mean, the light would be on all hours of the night. He would walk back and forth waiting for telegrams from mm -hmm. the front. and. Uh, yeah, he spent so much time in this particular room. So we wanted to represent that. You also represent something else which he could not escape. He could, no matter how much time he spent in the office, he could not escape the war. Yeah, the Civil War was certainly something that was uh, full frontal the entire presidency, except for six days. Uh, it, it was, war ended, and six days later yeah. he was assassinated. So the threat of war or war hung over him. So here we see uh, Lincoln and his struggles with the Civil War. We hear about the Gettysburg Address. It's a, it's a moment to reflect on how important this was mm -hmm. during his presidency. And the Emancipation Proclamation. These are all touch points here. We touch this mm -hmm. and we hear about the Emancipation Proclamation. But not how great it was. We hear from people about how, how that's destroying this country and how you need to take it back. So we hear about the, the, the perils that Lincoln must face yeah. in this Emancipation Proclamation. And I think a visitor has to put themselves in their place and say, with all this pressure, what would you do? Mm -hmm. and, and I think, I don't know. I, I don't know if I would have had enough backbone to stay with it. And yeah. I'm glad Lincoln did. Yeah. Yep, and of course all that sort of is translated here. These it is. and you and you're welcome to touch them as you go. Correct, by. and in this whole room, yeah, touch the touch That's the chair fantastic. Uh, and the, the fireplace and everything. Yeah. You look out the window, not much to see, yeah. but you can do that. And we also hear the, the personal side of Mary again, uh, and because she's been relegated to Crazy Mary, yeah. the first lady who was crazy. The fact is, is we have again, this is a touch point, and we hear six different views of people. Some of them, including William Crook, who worked at the White House, are basically saying, you don't understand that this woman faced more 
trouble than any other first lady I've ever served under. And he served it from Mrs. Lincoln through Mrs. Roosevelt, Theodore Roosevelt's wife. Yeah. And so I think he understood that Mary Lincoln went through quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah we should know more about her. I mean, it's easy to judge people in the after it's all over, isn't it? Correct, it is. It is. And it's, it's important, I guess, for us as historians then to reflect back and yeah. look at both sides. Now, this is a wild room. This is, you've chosen some very interesting colors in yes. here. Yes, yes. Uh, I don't know if it's purple or it's like a black light sort of effect. It, it is kind of like a blue. And you know what's interesting in the audio video sort of what happens here is it turns to red eventually because we hear Lincoln's last address that he gives in, on, in the White House. And in attendance is John Wilkes Booth who hears this speech because Lincoln basically saying it's time to give the right to vote to black men. He uh -huh. is suggesting this, the first president ever to suggest it. Uh -huh. And John Wilkes Booth says, by God, that's the last speech you'll ever make. I will put him through. And then this whole room turns to red because we know now what's happening. You're walking through Lincoln's life. You know the end is coming. We're going to go back to where we yeah. were, and that's Lincoln being yeah. shot. And that would be right through this yes, door. Yes, it is. The first scene that we saw, we sat down in a couch very similar to the one we're about to sit on, and we looked mm -hmm. ahead and we saw what looked like a tapestry. It was a big picture frame. Yes. A film came up, and we saw Lincoln shot mm -hmm. and go through his life, through mm -hmm. his, the phases of his life. When you come in here, he's on his deathbed. He, he is. And this we see then the, the ticking of the clock ends with this, the spirit, which we sort of saw lead us. Now it goes back into Lincoln's body. Mary is escorted out. The doctor pronounces him dead, and Edwin Stanton says, now he belongs to the ages, and the door opens, signaling it is the end. And so we've reached the end of his life and the end of his life review. A brand new museum dedicated to the memory of Abraham Lincoln, a remarkable undertaking, and I think you'll agree a remarkable outcome as well. The Lincoln Heritage Museum at Lincoln College is open to the public Monday through Saturday to groups or individuals. With another Illinois story in Lincoln, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.